Hi folks, I'm back again with another video and uh, this one is uh, a response to a thread started by Richard McCook or Sir Richard McCook I think as uh, Rob Walker now calls him. Um, it's to celebrate his second anniversary in the VC so congratulations Richard. If you don't know his channel, I'm sure most of you do, check it out, really enjoyable. Uh, what he's asked us to do is to show two albums by 12 acts that you either haven't shown before or you wouldn't normally show. I found this a bit difficult in that, I mean there's tons of stuff I haven't shown but a lot of it I would like to show in, in future videos. So like I say it was a bit difficult to choose the acts but Oh, one other rule was that they had to be consecutive uh, albums by that act. So let's get started. And we start with the lead singer of a, of a favourite band of mine. And that's Grace Slick, who is obviously with Jefferson Airplane and then Jefferson Starship. And this is her 1980 solo album, Dreams which was quite successful. It, uh, the title track was released as a single over here in the UK and got into the top 30. And it's a cracking song, Dreams. It's uh, epic, sort of almost a Brechtian uh, in its uh, feel. Um, but the rest of the album is really good as well. I, I rate this album quite highly. I haven't listened to it in a long while until yesterday. Um, there's, orchestra, there's a couple of other tracks on there with uh, with orchestra which are quite epic in tone as well but um, this is really good she then followed it up the following year 1981 excuse me with this album <laughs> and as you, I think you can tell by the cover it is totally different in tone than dreams dreams had that epic feel with the like i say with the orchestrations all that is gone this is a almost pure hard rock arena rock album it's not bad for what it does i mean it, i listened to it last night and it was enjoyable but it's it's not as good as dreams and in fact all the songs on here are either written or co-written with a guitarist Scott Zito and it's to be honest it's more like a Scott Zito album with Grace Lick on vocals um, not bad but a bit of a disappointment after the after dreams I think she only ever did one more solo album after this which is software in 84 which I've never heard and I think after doing this, she rejoined Starship. Starship. Um, that's Grace Lick. Next up, on a previous video, I mentioned that the Paisley Underground was very important to me in the 80s when I was virtually given up on music. And as um, John Buggy Hi-Fi, I think, said, Paisley Underground saved music in the 80s. You might not agree with that, but one of the bands was this one, Green on Red. I managed to see live in the mid 80s in Manchester. Excellent band. This is, I think, is this their first album. Well, it's a mini album rather than uh, a full length album. And this is probably their most. Um, psychedelic and trippiest album of all of them mainly due to the fact that the way up front is the organ of uh, Chris Cassavis is that how you say his name uh, sort of very sort of that sort of psych punk seeds in sort of organ the, the doors are mixed up in that this is really good especially the first side with songs like Death and Angels, Black Knight, which are excellent. 
They followed that up in 1983 with their first full-length album. And this was Gravity Talks. Oops. Sorry, that isn't glare. <laughs> oh, the photo looks. And this is in a similar vein, but I think the psych elements are starting to be toned down and they're moving more towards that Americana country sound that they developed further on. After this, they became a five piece. Uh, Chuck Prophet joined the band. Uh, but this is a good album as well. Spe love the, the title track, especially, is good. Excellent. Next up, stick in with the States. And we have the Georgia Satellites. This was their first, again, mini LP released on Making Waves in the UK. And they were sort of, uh, sort of like a stonesy, bluesy, hard rock band. Great, a bar band, basically, I think. <laughs> Great fun. Um, on here you have uh, their cover of the races on. The rest of them are are written by Dan Baird, who is their main songwriter. The other main guy was Rick Richards, the lead guitarist. I think on here, the, the um, rhythm section were basically meant for hire, because it's basically a duo. Uh, that was followed by their first Oops, get it out of the cover. Full length album, self titled The Georgia Satellites. This uh, is pretty much in the same vein. In fact, they redo the, um, the song Keep Your Hands to Yourself from the first album, and that became a massive hit for them. In, uh, got to number two, I think, in the States. Battleship Chains is a great song. And they also do Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story. On this, they'd, uh, they'd become a, a proper four-piece with a you know, fixed um, rhythm section. Really good fun. Dirty Rolling Stones like guitar grunge. It, it's good fun this. I think this actually on the back of that uh, hit single went platinum in the uh, States. Next up, a favourite of mine at the t and that's Run Rig. They're a Scottish Celtic rock band uh, from the Isle of Skye formed in 73. Initially is a sort of a Cayley band, I think. And it's sort of a, this is, a, the first album was sort of the Cayley band type of music mixed with sort of softish electric uh, folk. This, they upped the, uh, this is their second album from, where is it from? Oh. 79, that's when it came out. And they upped the, the rock element on it. But this is ex this is an excellent album because a lot of the songs that they did at this point were sung in Gaelic, which I think added to their appeal, at least for me. The third album was equally as good if not better and that was recovery same formula with a lot of gaelic rock songs on on here uh, folk rock uh, quite diverse and powerful actually this is fantastic melodies brilliant vocals superb band after this um, they started to tone down 
the the folk elements I think a little bit uh, not as overt and sound more in English than Gaelic the number of Gaelic songs went down uh, they became to my ears they became more like big country in that sort of sound they were still quite good but not as interesting I, to me personally as on these two albums next we have on the Aerosmith and their is this their third album Toys in the Attic considered I think possibly their best uh, again it's that mix of Stones and Zip Raunch um, excellent stuff I love this album it's, to admit, it's great um, they followed that up with it one that's probably just as equally as good and that's Rocks I um, mean you've got on between these you've got tracks like Sweet Emotion, Walk This Way, Back in the Saddle, Get the Lead Out, Nobody's Fault, excellent hard rock. Their first four or five, I think up to the live album they were a really good band. After that I became less interested in them but these two are well worth having if you like that stonesy uh, hard rock raunchy rock and roll brilliant I'm not really a metal fan but next up we have Judas Priest with their second album Sad Wings of Destiny on this though I mean you can hear the their proggy roots still and uh, you get um, it, elements of like Queen, Zep, the twin guitars of uh, like Thin Lizzy and Wishbone Ash and bits of Deep Purple. This is a really good album and I think it's the, the best they ever did to my ears. The next one is very good too and that's Sin for Sin and this was their third one this one was 70 the other one was 76 this is 77 this one's probably not quite as coherent as the, the other you know um, Sad Wings of Destiny but this is the one that features their cover of uh, John Byers's Diamond Rust excellent cover uh, <laughs> totally left wheel left field choice for a heavy metal band I think they became even more metal after this they obviously became massive uh, but to be honest and well I can listen to their stuff and, and then quite enjoy it I must have been I, I find them difficult to take seriously at times I mean just the their image with that leather all that leather it just looks a bit spinal tapish to be honest but they're a good band and I think these are their two best albums next up uh, we have Mr Wangford Hank Wangford this is actually uh, Dr Sam Hutt <laughs> we took the stage name Hank Wangford uh, when his uh, girlfriend married his best friend uh, so he devised this character to play uh, country and western music uh, with songs from the uh, Wangford Hall of Pain there's a lot of humor in the albums um, he became quite big on the uh, London pub circuit and that's where I saw him back in must have been 81 when I was living for a while in London but uh, there's some great stuff on here like Cowboy Stay On Longer <laughs> he also does a version of Wild Thing I mean he's, he's got some great players on here Albert Lee, Rabbit, Pete Winfield, Andy Roberts, Andy Fairweather Low, Dave Mattox, Liam Ganocchi, um, Tristan Fry, BJ Cole 
you've got to have BJ Cole on a country rock album, a British country rock album. Excellent album. He followed that, I think, with a, a live album by the Hank Wanford Band. This is great. This again is just great, good fun with the uh, superb Jogging with Jesus on it. <laughs> if you if you like country rock with a bit of humour, you can't go wrong with Hank Wangford. Next up we have Tomita. Tomita was a Japanese uh, composer and electronic musician I think one of the sort of like pioneers of electronic mu music uh, died three or four years back I think he did a whole series of albums which were mainly electronic uh, adaptations of famous classical pieces um, this is his eighth album uh, Daphnis and Chloe which is music by Ravel, so there's Daphne and Chloe, Bolero, A Van for a Dead Princess and Mother Goose. It can be a bit cheesy in places but they're enjoyable enough. That was his eighth album, that was from 1980, so this one was his ninth from 81 and this is the Grand Canyon and for this he interpreted um, the Grand Canyon Suite by Ferdinand Rudolf von Grafe, uh, 20th century American composer. This is his Grand Canyon Suite, it's his best known uh, piece. And it's finished off with uh, a the Syncopated Clock, which is by another American composer, Leroy Anderson. And that is Tomita. Next up, we go a little bit proggish with the band Sky. Now, Sky was sort of like a uh, super group in many ways. I mean, you've got great John Williams, the uh, classical guitarist, who would, I think just before this had released a fusion album where he played electric guitar for the first time. Uh, you had Herbie Flowers, you know, probably best known for that bass line in uh, Blue Reed's Walk on the Wild Side. Uh, Kevin Peake, uh, Tristan Fry, the great percussionist and uh, Francis Monkman the keyboardist from Curved Air and this is they again uh, did a lot of classical pieces as well as pieces they wrote themselves I suppose it's prog light but I really enjoyed these that was their first album that was released in 79 in 1980, they released this album, Sky 2, a double album, uh, and I think this is where they become really popular. Uh, they got this. I think this got to number two in the in the UK, uh, went platinum, whatever. Um, this is a really good album. I think they might have even had it was Takata a hit single. I think it might have been. Um, it's if you like classical interpretations done with rock rhythms, then I don't think you can go wrong with this. Maybe a bit background music in places, but I I still enjoy it. Back to the states for the next one, and we have. Camper van Beethoven. This was their. Oh, this is from 80, 1988. Um, 
and was their first major label album. This was uh, released by Virgin Records. They're a band that's uh, quite eclectic. They have elements of obviously pop and rock, ska, punk, folk, country, world music. A little bit of everything. I really enjoyed this one. It's, uh, it's this is the one where they did their version of Oh Death, and I think they did it as a uh, homage to Kaleidoscope, who also covered that song. If you don't know them, check them out. If, if I think you, if that eclectic sounding mix sound is up your street. That was their, what was it, I say their, oh, I think that was their third, fourth album, something like that. Uh, this was their next one, released in 1989, Key Lime Pie. This was their final, I think, album before this uh, broke up in 1990. And uh, this is a, a bit of a darker record, less openly psychedelic, I think, but um, still has that eclectism to it. Um, I think. Not listen to. Oh yes, this is the one with uh, their version of the Quo's Pictures of Matchstick Men on it. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Uh, where are we up to? The 11th one, and we have another American band, Thin White Rope. Now, they were sort of on the edges of that whole Paisley Underground uh, movement, but they were also sort of like described as desert rock. Uh, sort of twin guitars with, uh, you know, Dark lyrics. Um, and vocals that uh, could maybe take a good bit of use to. Um, this was uh, released in 1990. It's their fourth album. And includes their version of Can's You Do Right. So, yeah take from like a 20 minute track down to about three but do a decent job of it actually good stuff their next album was this one um the ruby c this was from 1991 was their fifth and i think their final album and Again, it's that sort of dark, quite weird in places, uh, desert rock. Good, good album though. And for my twelfth one, as this is stuff you would, excuse me, everything's falling down. Albums you wouldn't normally show. And I've got, I'm going to show two of the greatest albums ever made. Now, why wouldn't you normally show them? It's because it's these two. Abbey Road and The White Album by The Beatles. Now, there are so many people who love The Beatles on the BC and who can speak about these with far more knowledge and eloquence than I could and can show probably you know more obscure pressings or regionals etc that there's no point in me showing you really the beatles everybody knows them everybody knows how great they were so that's my final one thank you richard for that i see you've got another one up that one is going to uh, take some thinking about. Anyway, folks, take care. Hope to see you soon. All the very best.